Hi, everybody, and welcome to the fifth episode of Snooze TV. On this episode, uh, it's all about asking the conference committee, and we are going to be answering your questions live about the upcoming 2015 Hypersomnia Foundation Conference. My name is Jennifer Beard, and I'm with the Hypersomnia Foundation, and you may be watching this episode on our website, which is hypersomniafoundation.org. And if that's the case, you're certainly welcome to watch this episode on our website and sit back and relax and enjoy the show. However, if you would like to make comments or ask questions of our guest panel live on the air, you're going to need to go over to our Google Plus page and post comments there or over to our YouTube page and post comments directly underneath this video window. So if you're watching on our website, the way you would do that is scroll all the way down to the bottom of the, of the website page and you'll see our social media icons. So you can click on the one that says G Plus for Google Plus, and it will take you right on over to our Google Plus page where you can find this event streaming live. And any comments that you make directly underneath this video window will um, come up onto our screen, and we can pull your question onto our screen live on the air. Same thing with YouTube. If you want to click on our YouTube icon, it will take you to our YouTube page and where this video is streaming live. You can make comments directly underneath that video and we can pull your comments and questions up onto our screen uh, from there. So the title of this show is Ask the Conference Committee. This is the fifth episode of Snooze TV. And I just want to give you guys a couple of tips um, for our audience members who want to ask questions. So let me try to share my screen. So let me know when you guys can see this, if you would, please. OK. Can you see my screen? OK, great. OK, so five tips for the audience when they make their comments. First of all, keep your questions succinct. We can only see on our screen so many characters. So if you get very uh, wordy in your question, we won't be able to see the whole thing. So keep it short and sweet, and we'll be able to um, show the audience members your question, and we'll be able to see your question as well. Um, keep your questions about the conference, please, because this show is really all about answering your conference-specific questions for the conference that we're hosting next month. And post questions that you think would be helpful for the audience members to know about the conference. We'd love to hear your comments, too, so if you're enjoying the show, please let us know that. And um, please know that your comment or question may appear on screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to stop sharing my screen now. Okay, am I back? Okay, great. Um, so just a reminder, Snooze TV airs live the second Friday of every month at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. And um, our next episode actually will take place in August. We're going to skip July because we have our conference event in July that we all need to focus on. So our next News TV live broadcast event will take place in August. So I want to go ahead and introduce the members of our guest panel tonight who have so graciously agreed to join us. And the first person that I'm going to introduce is Brianna Espana. So we're going to bring her up in the big screen so everybody can see her. Okay. Brianna Espana was diagnosed in early 2013 with idiopathic hypersomnia. She is married to a person with narcolepsy who was diagnosed in 2008 and has been a volunteer with the Narcolepsy Network for three years now. Brianna and her husband live in Dallas, Texas with their three boys. And we just found out she has a baby due in late December 2015. Congratulations, Brianna. Brianna has graciously agreed to spearhead our 2015 Hypersomnia Foundation Conference volunteers. And she is an essential part of our 2015 Hypersomnia Foundation Conference Committee. Welcome to the show, Brianna. Thank you. My privilege. Okay. And we also have uh, Diana Kimmel with us tonight. Diana Kimmel is a stay-at-home mother of two. Both Diana and her oldest child have been diagnosed with idiopathic hypersomnia. Diana volunteers with the Hypersomnia Foundation when she's feeling up to it. She was an essential part of the 2014 Hypersomnia Conference Planning Committee 
and she has graciously agreed to serve on the 2015 Hypersomnia Foundation Conference Committee. Thanks for being here with us tonight, Diana. We appreciate it. Thank you. And as always, we have wonderful Michael Sparace with us this evening. He is our uh, technical producer of Snooze TV. Michael is a product management analyst for Home Depot. He received his Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy at Clemson University and began his career working for Clemson University's Master of Public Administration program. This led to an exciting opportunity working at, as a CTO for an education technology startup in Virginia. After Michael met his wife, Deidre, he began looking for a position in the Atlanta area where he currently resides and works. Michael became interested in the Hypersomnia Foundation after his wife, who was recently diagnosed with idiopathic hypersomnia, attended the 2014 Hypersomnia Conference. He has a background in web development, data analysis, tech support, and distance education, and we are so happy to have him as our technical producer. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thanks for so, having me. I just want to kind of jump in and um, and explain to the audience. You know, we we decided to try to do something a little bit different for this episode of Snooze TV, and we posted out on our social media channels and on our website um, a, a Google form where people could submit questions ahead of time, ahead of the show, and people definitely did do that. But we definitely want to encourage you to post questions uh, as you have them as well so that we can pull those on screen during the show live and answer those questions as we go. So the first question that I'm going to throw out to the conference committee comes from um, somebody who, who submitted a question ahead of time, and he asks, how did we select our venue? So Diana, I'll throw this one out to you, because I know that you were um, an integral part of that process, so if you want to start the ball rolling talking about how we selected the venue this year. And uh, we need to make sure you're unmuted, Di. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, sure. Uh, this, sure. This, this, for this conference, we um, submitted RFPs to over 25 hotels and conference centers in the area. Uh, we narrowed it down to five. Um, that fit all the criteria that we thought was important and some of the feedback that we got from last year's conference. Uh, that other people either really liked or thought it was important or would like to see. Um, when we narrowed it down to the five, we went and visited them. Um, and the Emory Conference Center definitely came through giving us all the uh, the wants that we wanted. Uh, a social venue the uh, for the pajama party. Um, a, a very elaborate, I would say, um, hotel area, a lot of comforts at home, a lot of areas for people to break off and have small meetings. Um, it's definitely a very welcoming place. So let's just back up for a minute because you said RFP and I just want to make sure that our audience members know what an RFP is. So an RFP is a request for proposal and <laughs> Diana and I weren't really sure how to do one and so we solicited some help from a couple of volunteers who were willing to work with us on, on that. And so we had a very lengthy Skype brainstorming session with, uh, with one volunteer, and he gave us some fantastic ideas um, for things. Basically, what you have to do is create this really long document. I mean, how long do you think it was? Like 15 pages or something? Exactly. I mean, it hit every single point. Um, I mean, from Wi-Fi to, you know, how many easels you wanted. Um, it so very yeah, really lengthy, very, very detailed. We had to pretty much plan every tiny, minute detail to the nth degree out a year in advance. Uh, and we had to put everything in writing that we were wanting. And then we went through a process where we submitted that RFP, that request for proposals, through the uh, Atlanta Visitors Bureau, because we're having the conference in Atlanta this year. And... Um, and then hotels could kind of see that or, or venues could see that and make proposals based on what we said we wanted. We also had a second volunteer that I want to acknowledge who was an integral part in putting that RFP together. He actually took everything from our brainstorming session and wrote it out in this beautiful lengthy document um, that we then took and kind of tweaked here and there um, based on what the board wanted as well. 
um, to our liking, and, and that's what we ended up submitting. So it was a, a long process, and I want to really acknowledge our two volunteers. Thank you, gentlemen. If you're watching, you know who you are, and we appreciate all your help. Thank you. Yeah, that was definitely a lifesaver, and um, definitely something we needed help on, so the volunteers really came in handy there. They, they taught us something on this one. <laughs> they really did, and uh, it was really interesting to me when we went out and, and did the, the venue visits, you know, for the top five finalists. Mm -hmm. um, that was a, a very lengthy process as well, and we got to actually walk around the venues and take pictures and really think about which venue would be the best fit um, for our attendees. So, Diana, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, why we picked the Emory Conference Center Hotel specifically? Uh, absolutely. Um, believe it or not, it had nothing to do with Emory. Um, although many people might think so, it, it wasn't. It really gave us soup to nuts, everything we wanted. Um, they addressed our RFP beautifully. Um, and one of the things we really wanted to offer our attendees was a complete package from the minute they wake up in the morning till in the evening. And one of the best parts of the last year's conference really was the, um, I mean, the sessions were awesome, but people really connected during the, the, the lunch time and stuff like that. So adding breakfast, lunch, and a full sit-down dinner really gives these attendees just the best possible experience we can give them. Um, one of the things that really stood out to me was the very large auditorium uh, type setting that we have as far as our main room. One of our secondary rooms is a smaller portion of that. It's like every attendee has their own desk. Um, so they have something to lean on, they have something to write on. Uh, and for me, being a hypersomnia person, I, I need that. To just sit in a plain chair the whole entire time is tough. So having our main room and one of our breakout sessions with that setting was, is, was very important to me. Yeah, I'm really glad that you brought up that it had nothing to do with Emory because, you know, it's just ironically named the Emory Conference Center. It's actually not affiliated with Emory University or Emory Hospital. Um, they're totally separate entities. I think they just use that name because of their proximity to mm -hmm. the, um, the medical buildings and, and to the school, to the university. So they, they really don't have any affiliation. But I wanted to go back and touch on the amphitheater rooms that you were referring yeah. to. Man, those rooms are so cool. I'm so excited for all the attendees to see them. It's actually stadium seating. So the presenters are on a stage kind of down at the bottom. And then the seats kind of go up um, and arc around um, the stage where the presenters are going to be talking. And as Diana mentioned, you know, everybody has a, a table to, to lean on, and there are plenty of places. What I really liked as a techie person, and Michael, I'm sure you can uh, identify with this, there are plugs everywhere, all around the desks, and so people can plug in and charge their device. People were encouraging people to bring your own device to this conference so that they can take notes. Um, and and all and we actually have a very big announcement about that at the end of the show. Don't let me forget, guys. We want to get people excited about it. I'm so excited uh, to announce this to everybody. The big, um, one of the big pluses with this one that we, we were able to secure was Wi-Fi um, throughout the entire conference area. Uh, and, and that's a big thing when you want to take notes and you know you want to share with other people. Uh, so yes, bring your own devices. You have something to to seat them down on. And charge them, which is really important. But to me, it's almost going to be like a, like a hypersomnia university setup. It's uh, it's really neat. Oh, that's an awesome way to put it. Thank you so much. So the next question that we have um, from somebody who has submitted one ahead of time is: Are there any places at the venue to hang out with my friends? That's so important. Ah, uh, yes. Um, lots of them. In the um, basically the main entry area to me it almost looks like um, there's like four separate living room setups is the best way that I can explain it um, and it goes along the whole way so there's a lot of space there there's a, you know obviously a restaurant in the back there's a beautiful garden with tables and umbrellas in the front there's a, another really nice se uh, section with a fire pit um, you know, so there, there's, and then 
it's just all around the hotel it just gives you multiples. You also have the pool and um, that area as well. Yeah, so as we're doing the venue walkthrough, um, when Diana mentioned that there's a garden out back, there's actually a waterfall <laughs> out back, which I thought was really neat. And what I really like, because um, it is going to be in July, so it'll be really nice weather here in Atlanta. Um, of course, it'll be a little bit hot in the afternoon, but in the morning and in the evening, it's very nice to sit outside in Atlanta, Georgia. And there's a ton of balcony space. I mean, to me, even a lot of the, the guest rooms have balconies, and outside of these living room areas that Diana mentioned, or the living room type areas that are kind of in the lobby, there are balcony areas outside with outdoor seating as well. So there's like tables with umbrellas and chairs, um, and as she pointed out as well, there are the fire pits with the chairs around them in the front. And I just, I really like the garden area, especially like by the waterfall. I could totally picture going out there and throwing a frisbee or something, hanging out with my friends. Um, and enjoying enjoying the beauty and the, the scenic beauty. It's so pretty there. There's a bunch of trees and stuff and you know, it really you is. in the heart of the city you kind of feel like you're out in the country. And, and to me that that place was really um, important to pick because it was so inviting and we have a lot of people coming in as early as Tuesday and Wednesday uh, to hit doctor appointments and things like that. So when you're staying you know four or five days it's nice to have some place that feels like home, gives you a lot of options. We'll get into later that there's a, a, a very big restaurant and shopping area within walking distance uh, to give you different I, you know, options for dinner and lunches for the days before and the days after you're there. So once again, it, to me it was just, there was no finding anything better than this location. Well, and what I like is that we really went through an official process to narrow it down to five when we did the five venue visits and really um, heard the nuts and bolts of, of what all was included and what was extra. I mean, you know, hands down, the Emory Conference Center really met all of our needs and um, gave, us, gave us what we wanted to give to our attendees this year, especially after the feedback from the 2014 conference. Yeah, you know, the, the other four places that we visited, they were really nice, but they just seemed very, um, I don't want to say cold, but just more business-like. This venue is more like a lodge. You know, you, people are going to feel like they're kind of on vacation once they get back there. And what I really like is that there's so many of us coming, we're pretty much taking over the place. <laughs> so yes. pretty much any person you encounter is going to be... Um, there for the Hypersomnia Foundation Conference, which I think is really cool. It, it kind of lends itself to a, a community atmosphere. It really is. Community atmosphere. So, Diana, I know you mentioned um, a few moments ago there is a restaurant in the, in the venue itself, but somebody is asking, and this is a question that was, that was posed, are there any restaurants within walking distance of the hotel? And I know that there is a whole, you know, area called Emory Point within walking distance. And you and I actually walked over there just to kind of see what that walk felt like. And it's a very short walk, people. It, it's it really is. like right around the corner. Um, now, there is a shuttle uh, that does run, you know, periodically that if you really wanted to, to take it over there. But honestly, it's, it's such a short walk. And it offers so much. Um, there's a yogurt place, a Mexican uh, food place, a Chinese food. Uh, there's a like an American tavern type of food. There's a fresh to order for salads. Uh, there's a witch witch, which is sandwiches, burgers. Um, there's an awesome the the deli is just hands down, and uh, you definitely have to try the chocolate babka there. So walk over there and try that. Um, you might have to yeah. It's worth going to, but also there is. Um, I'm sorry, did you say babka is in like the Seinfeld episode? <laughs> absolutely, talk of babka. Yes, it is worth it. There's also a CVS and some specialty stores. Uh, so you know, all the um, the hotel rooms have refrigerators at the uh, conference center. So you know, you can walk over, get some drinks and snacks, and um, you know, it just gives you a lot of different options instead of just the uh, the hotel. So um, if I forget to fill one of my medications, I can just hop right over to CVS and, and get it filled over there in the Emory Point area. Yep. Yeah. 
And you know what I really like about that area too is that a lot of the restaurants have outdoor seating, so those areas yeah. are really nice to if you get like a group of people together, you mm -hmm. can just walk right over there, have a lunch, you know, hang out, maybe have a coffee, that kind of thing. It, it is, and there's shopping there too. So if you just want to hit a couple stores and maybe do a little bit of light shopping, that's a, a good area to do that too. Okay, so let's talk about transportation because if I'm coming in from out of town, I have to figure out how I'm going to get from the airport to the venue. So um, I know that we had one question about transportation um, from somebody who submitted that ahead of time. So thank you for submitting that question because that was a really good one. And the question is, can I get only one-way transportation? I actually don't need round-trip transportation so is there one-way transportation and if so what are the hours that that transportation is available because what we had posted on the Eventbrite and on our website was round trip fifty dollars and you would call and make reservations um, for this particular shuttle and you would go to these particular stalls where the shuttles located and take the shuttle to the conference center and for 50 bucks, they'll take you back to the airport, and that's a round trip deal. So this person's saying, hey, I only need one way transportation and not round trip. So, Diana, I know that you actually called and asked about that. So, what did you find out? Uh, you, you absolutely can uh, get the one way. It's a little bit uh, more expensive. It's $50 for the round trip, $30 for one way. Um, you might have to help me out with the hours. I believe it is 9 to 9. Um, going going to the conference center and nine to six returning back to the ho the uh, airport from the hotel. Okay, so I called um, this evening to check on the shuttle hours. So here's the deal: um, from the airport to the hotel, those shuttles will run from six a.m. until eleven thirty p.m. every thirty minutes, and you do need to call and make reservations so that they know to kind of wait on you. Um, and make your reservations with them. Now, going back from the hotel to the airport, the way that that works is those hours are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., so the hours are different going back, and you have to give the shuttle company 24-hour notice of when you want the shuttle to be at the hotel to pick you up to take you back to the airport. So my suggestion would be um, if you're checking out Sunday, for example, Decide on you know Friday or Saturday when or when you call and make make your reservations what time you want the shuttle to pick you up on Sunday, and when you make your reservations with the shuttle, tell them that at that point in time, um, and it just needs to be between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and it, and she told me I said does it matter is it different hours on like a weekday versus a weekend and she said no, um, but just that you know going from the hotel to the airport, the, those hours are 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Whereas coming from the airport to the hotel, it's 6 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. So those are, are the hour differences. And you can always call the shuttle company. We have that number on our website. Um, we've been putting it out in the newsletter blast to you. And it's on the Eventbrite, that phone number where you can call and make reservations or ask any other questions about transportation. All right, so I want to engage Brianna in our conversation a little bit. Um, I know that you've been kind of sitting back a little bit, but let's talk about volunteering, Brianna, and thank you so much for, for spearheading that whole initiative for us. Um, you are definitely our, our volunteer extraordinaire manager, supervisor, lead volunteer. And so one of the questions that we had um, is, how long am I committing to volunteering if I decide to help. So I wonder if you'd be willing to talk about that. Absolutely. So the goal with volunteering is basically you commit as much as you'd like. Of course, people are paying to come to these events. So the main thing that we want to make sure is that everyone who volunteers isn't, it, that volunteering is not going to interfere with your conference experience because, of course, that's what we really are there for. Um, in the past, a lot of volunteers have said that they actually get a great deal of uh, enhancement from going and volunteering because they feel like they have a purpose, they get to meet new people, they feel like they have a place, so they're less scared, especially the new people that haven't been to a conference before. They feel like, I'm, I'm not alone here, so it's, it's a great experience to participate in. 
Um, so, do you still need help with uh, conference volunteers? Of course. <laughs> we do have um, a few people who have graciously volunteered at this point, but there's always room for more people um, to come and join our team. And of course, you can find the form to fill out on the hypersomniafoundation.org. Just go ahead and locate that volunteer sign-up sheet and fill out the brief survey that kind of asks a few questions so we know where you want to help, when you want to help, and um, you know, we'll certainly make sure that it's not interfering with your conference experience in any way. So I really love that idea because you know, volunteering is such a great way to give back, and um, you know, it makes people feel really good to be able to help out. But at the same time, you're paying for your conference ticket, and you want to really get to experience the conference too. So I really like that um, that you you go out of your way to make sure that people are volunteering in like small increments that really doesn't interfere with their conference day, but I love how you say it enhances their conference day. And you're so skilled at doing that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned um, filling out the volunteer sign-up form, which as, as you said is on our website, hypersomniafoundation.org, under our conference section. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the questions in that form asks about t-shirt size. And, and someone has said, um, conference volunteer t-shirts, when, when am I going to get one? <laughs> um, yes, we actually have these wonderful shirts that will distinguish you from other conference goers that says volunteer so that everyone knows you're the person to, to kind of get some help from. Um, and you're basically going to receive those at the mandatory Friday evening meeting. Yeah, I think it's really important that we have a, a Friday evening meeting, and that way we can just have a little discussion. Everybody understands what's expected of them and um, what's not expected of them, and uh, everybody can get their, their conference t-shirt Friday night, and that way they can wear them during the event on Saturday. Yes. As well as um, with that meeting, it's nice because then they can meet us as well <laughs> and meet the other volunteers and kind of get to know one another and be like wonderful <laughs> new friends <laughs> yeah you know that's a really good point because then it becomes more like a volunteer community I mean we all get to come together and and meet each other and and you know develop that camaraderie for the next day yes exactly oh wow okay um, on this topic we have a question Michael, can you pull that up on your screen? Thank you. Oh, nope, not that one, the other one. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Um, so this question comes in from Janet Ross. So, Brianna, I guess this would be um, to you. Janet says, I have already submitted the volunteer form. Thank you, Janet. We're so excited that you signed up to volunteer. That's awesome. When will I hear back about what you would like for me to do? So hopefully, Janet, you um, heard back about, like, you should have gotten an autoresponder that said, thank you so much for signing up, and we'll get back with you shortly. But I guess your question is, when are you going to follow up and let me know? Yes, I think that's pretty much it. Um, wonderful. Thank you, Janet, for asking that question. Um, I plan on basically emailing everyone, just kind of introduce myself. Um, and then kind of going from there for steps, um, we're still working on some side things before we really delve into it with everyone else so it doesn't make it any com any bit confusing for you guys. Um, but absolutely, you should hear from me within the next week or so, just an introduction email saying, hello, my name is Brianna, and a little bit of other information about myself, but wonderful question. And uh, please look for my email. It should be under dfwsleephelp at gmail.com. That's where you should be receiving it from. So thank you for submitting that question. Awesome. Thanks, Brianna. Okay, let's see. Um, should we change topics? I see we have a couple more questions that have popped up here. So let's see. Michael, can you pull up um, one of the other questions for us, please? Awesome, thank you. Okay, so Kathy Butts Arnold asks, how would you persuade a person recently diagnosed that the conference would be a good idea? That's such a great question, Kathy. Thank you so much for submitting your question. 
All right, so who would like to delve into to that? Why is it a good idea if I have recently been diagnosed to come to this conference? I guess I'll start on that one. Um, the biggest thing for me is um, meeting somebody else that has this. Uh, usually by the time you've been diagnosed, you've gone through years of feeling like you're alone, uh, maybe a little crazy, um, nobody believes you. Uh, nobody can really relate to what you're saying. Um, you know, you get the old, oh, well, I'm sleepy. And when you really meet somebody and spend some time with other people that have this, it's just like this awakening. Whether it's a support group, whether it's a, a conference, there's a huge difference. Um, my first conference that I went to happened to be an narcolepsy one because hard insomnia was not available. And it, it was a game changer for me. The connections you felt, uh, the support that you felt, the information that you got, it's irreplaceable. Um, and one of the things I noticed last year was everybody left feeling so much better than when they came in. Um, I think I put out the uh, the one out uh, comment out there that somebody made was, I came expecting weakness and found strength. And that really nails it. Whether you're a supporter, whether you're a per person with hypersomnia, you will get more out of this than you'll know. Education is just a part of it. Everything else that comes along with it, like I said, the support, the meeting new friends, that is really what makes going to a conference special. So, <laughs> so I'd like to add on, on that, because that was beautiful, of course, <laughs> that, um, like she said, is that it's not just the people who are diagnosed, but also the relatives, their friends, their supporters. Um, before I was diagnosed, my husband had narcolepsy, and of course I went to the narcolepsy conventions, because the HF was not created yet um, and as a supporter it gave me strength to continue and it helped me see that these diagnoses, you know, idiopathic hypersomnia, narcolepsy, what have you, they're not death sentences. They are just a different living style. That's it. I mean, my husband and I are very much so proof going crazy with a fourth child. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can. It's not the end of the world. And going to these conferences kind of shows you all the people that are living with um, hypersomnia and surviving it and thriving with it and still achieving their goals and their dreams. And you know, it not, they're going out and they're still living life. They're not, you know, locked up in a room and being able to go out there and see other people and go, you know, some days I am locked in my room, but you know what, I still make it through the day and knowing that I have other people out there, it just, it helps me that much more, being able to have that camaraderie with other people and go, man, today was a day. <laughs> you know, if I can add something else, Jen. Um... When somebody asks me, and I talk to a lot of people, whether it's on the phone or, or through emails and chatting, I really believe in my heart that this is the best thing for people to do. Um, it's not just because I'm volunteering or whatever. Our speakers and our presenters are hands down some of the best people that I've ever met. They don't just come and do their session and go home. They are really in it all day long. I think people were really taken back at our last conference that, you know, when you know these doctors came in to speak, they never left. They they ate lunch with you. They stayed all day long. They were, I guess, having just as good of a time as we were, and getting just as much out of it as we were. Um, they were learning things from us. We were learning things from them. The other part of it that really impressed me was the relationships that left. That those people still talk. They still support each other, and now they're looking forward to coming back together. Um, so like I said, it, to me, it's just, um, you know, it's one of those things that when somebody buys a ticket after they talk to me, I know in my heart that they will leave happy, and they will be happy that they went to this experience. Wow, guys, very well said. I, I can't, I, I don't think I could have said it any better myself. And, it, you know, what you guys talked about with the supporters and the family members and the friends and the spouses and the partners getting a lot out of it as well as people that have been diagnosed. Our, that really leads right into our next question um, that was submitted ahead of time. And this person is asking, will there be a lot of supporters attending or just people with hypersomnia? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just wanted to touch on that. We actually this year are having sessions just for supporters. 
We are having a parent support group as one of our sessions. We are having a supporter support group as one of our sessions. We actually have speakers coming in just to talk to parents about school accommodations um, and, and different assistive technologies that are available for their children um, who, who have idiopathic hypersomnia. If you're a college student with idiopathic hypersomnia or a high school student with idiopathic hypersomnia, there are sessions tailored just to, to you as well. But in terms of the supporters, I was actually really surprised to look at the demographics when people started registering for the conference. I would say about 30 to 35 percent of our attendees are supporters, which I think is phenomenal and it's fabulous. And it, there's nothing like having that network of support around you. Um, it, it's hard enough to have a loved one who's diagnosed with idiopathic hypersomnia and the strain that that puts on the family and the relationships. But then to be able to go to a conference like this and find other supporters who are going through the same things that you're going through as a supporter, that, that's a, a, a tremendous help. And, and it feels like um, such a, a huge support to gain those connections. So absolutely, we are going to have a lot of supporters. I myself am, am a supporter, and I'm going to the conference. I bought a ticket. And uh, Michael, do you mind if I mention you? <laughs> sure, absolutely. So Michael is also a supporter, and he is going to be coming to the conference as well. And uh, so if you're a supporter, definitely you know try to connect with Michael and me, and we can point you in the in the right direction. But definitely make sure that you plan to attend the supporter support group or the parent support group um, if that's applicable to you as well. Okay, you know, so go ahead, go ahead, Di. You know I, I run a um, support group in Atlanta once a month, and it started out just for people with hypersomnia, and a lot of supporters come with those um, people. And I call it the supporters nod, because something will be said, and they have had no idea that this is actually something that has to do with their loved one's hypersomnia, and they start to feel like they're not alone. And it's it's a really good experience for supporters as well. And, and I think Michael can remember that somebody goes, oh, wait, she does that too. or you know, and, and they finally feel like their frustrations aren't just them. We all do this. And, uh, I, and I like it. I love when supporters come because I think it's just as meaningful for them as it is the person with hypersomnia. Absolutely. Okay, so let's, let's switch gears now and talk about our social events. Um, let's talk about the aquarium trip first. I know, Diana, last year at the end of the 2014 hypersomnia conference, some of the feedback that we received were that people really wanted more social events and more opportunities to connect because we did one day, one room, pedal to the metal, it was nonstop all day long and um, you know the, the only real constructive criticism that we received is that people wanted some opportunities to connect with other people a little bit more closely. So this year you and I decided to um, offer two social events. One is the Georgia Aquarium trip that's taking place Friday afternoon from uh, noon to five. And the other is the pajama party that's taking place on Saturday evening after dinner, after the conference, from uh, seven to 10 p.m. So let's talk about the Georgia Aquarium trip first. Somebody um, submitted this question, which I, I think is really a good question. How will I know where I get my aquarium ticket? Um, I'll take that one. Um, when you purchased your uh, ticket through Eventbrite, that wasn't the end of Eventbrite. From here on out, you will get uh, emails periodically reminding you that this is coming up. Don't forget to make your hotel reservations or don't forget to you know, make your transportation. But as it gets closer, if you have bought a ticket to the aquarium, you will get an Eventbrite email telling you exactly what your steps are going to be. Um, the basic shell of it is we are going to meet down in the lobby of the uh, hotel at 12 o'clock. Um, we will give everybody a name tag and everything they need to go to the aquarium. They'll have a little bit of time to mingle with the other attendees before they get on the bus. Um, so Brianna, I know that you are going to be attending the aquarium trip and you'll be with the, the people on that trip. 
And um, when people come back, I know that we we are going to have a registration event on Friday afternoon. So do you want to talk a little bit about what that will be like for people? Yeah, so I mean, I think the easiest thing to do would really be to get off the bus and go straight into the line for the registration table so you don't have to wake up early on Sunday or sorry, Saturday. Um, you know, during breakfast and such, and that way you won't miss the keynote speaker or anything like that. It's just easiest to get it all out of the way on Friday, right off the bus. You'll have plenty of time. I believe registration goes till about 7, so you'll have more than enough time to just go through the line and get all your registration packets and such. And, you know, just a side note is um, while you'll be on the trip, Brianna, and you'll be getting to know all those people, we have a list of all the people that are at the aquarium as well. So we'll be expecting you to come back and we'll know exactly who you know who to look forward to seeing and uh, have your stuff ready. And if you bought a t-shirt you know ahead of time we'll have that ready for you as well. So don't feel like you're missing anything um, by going to the aquarium because we'll be there waiting for you. Right and um, Friday evening or Friday afternoon from 4 to 7 when the registration is set up it's going to be set up in the hotel lobby as they said. Whereas Saturday morning, registration is actually going to be downstairs over closer to where the conference rooms are located. So um, don't get confused. There are two different locations for registration. Um, we also know that people are going to be checking into the hotel if they're staying at the venue. So I wanted to kind of circle back around to some hotel stuff for a second. Um, because we negotiated um, a room rate of 109 for our conference attendees at the venue itself, the Emory Conference Center Hotel. However, Diana and I discovered something a little bit disappointing the other day. Do you want to talk about that, Di? <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, it's disappointing and it's it's, it's exciting and encouraging. Um, we are booking out the hotel. Um, you know, we have a uh, like I said, we have people checking in as early as Tuesday. Um, there's a over. There's going to be over 60 to 65 attendees in the hotel on Thursday night already. Um, so we really, our our attendees bought their tickets early. Uh, they booked their hotels early, and I think we only have a handful of rooms left right now. So if you uh, are thinking about it, book your hotel room, get it secured. You're at this point going to have to call the hotel front desk. Tell them you're with the Hypersomnia Foundation group and get those reservations made. Um, if you're having a problem and you need to find a hotel past that, email us at, uh, is it conference? Conference at hypersomniafoundation.org. .org, and we'll, um, we'll give you some options as well uh, of some other really close hotels that are comparable in the right. But definitely, if you're thinking about it, as soon as you're done watching this, get on the phone and uh, make yourself a reservation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I say it's disappointing just because it was disappointing to hear that we had almost, there were only a few rooms left. But as you say, the positive piece of that is we've booked out the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. People with hypersomnia were taking it over and supporters and loved ones. And it, it's just going to be a wonderful community atmosphere, as I said. So, you know, yeah, a few rooms left, um, but there are a lot of hotels surrounding the area, um, so you could look for a nearby hotel if the, the venue runs out of rooms um, and just, you know, take a taxi cab over to the venue. So that's an alternative for you. You know, as far as staying at the hotel, it's nice um, because you have a lot, of, a lot of other hypersomnia people there and supporters. On the side note, when we're talking about the, um, the social events, a lot of times, especially before the last conference, a lot of people talk about, I'll never make it, I'm going to be tired, um, you know, I, I don't even know that I can get through the conference. All I can say is I was shocked. Uh, adrenaline does kick in, um, and it does something we definitely lack most of the time, but the excitement of the people that attended the conference, not only did they stay awake during the conference, I was shocked to see how many people congregated, continued to, to go off into small groups, play games, have dinner, until the very late hours of the night, which is one of the reasons we really felt it was important to do that social event afterwards, because as those relationships were made all day long, they did not want to stop hanging out with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so let's talk about the pajama party for a second. And uh, Michael, would you be willing to pull up that question that we have about the sure. pajama party for us? Um, I am so excited about this pajama party. I cannot even tell you. So after we all have dinner, dinner is included in your conference ticket. So you're actually going to get a continental breakfast. You're going to get snacks and drinks all day long. So between sessions, you can run out and get a soda or a water or, or a snack if you need one. There's even a hot snack, remember, um, a very hearty hot snack during the day as well. Yeah, absolutely, which is so exciting. There's also a buffet lunch that you're going to, and, and a sit-down buffet lunch, so you get to pick whatever you'd like for your lunch and sit down in the lunchroom and have a nice, long, hour-long, leisurely lunch. Um, and then at the very end of the conference sessions, after the, the conference day closes, dinner is also included in your conference ticket. So we'll go back to the same room where we had lunch. We'll have a nice sit-down buffet dinner, nice, long, leisurely dinner. And then those people who have purchased tickets to the pajama party can meander. It, it's in the venue. You don't even have to go anywhere. There's no getting on, in a car or on a bus. You just walk down the hall. Um, and, and our pajama party is going to take place in Wisteria Lanes. Now, you do need um, you know, a, a supplemental ticket to attend the pajama party, just like you need an extra ticket if you want to go to the aquarium trip with everybody. Um, so I would really encourage you to get a pajama party ticket. It is going to be bunches of fun. So let me go ahead and pull up this question here. Um, Diana is asking, can I still purchase pajama party tickets? And uh, I'm really glad that you asked that question, Di. Thanks for posting it because this is actually a question that Diana and I are receiving all the time. Um, and the answer is? Yes, you can. Um, you can find it. You can go back into your Eventbrite order form, just pick the pajama party, and uh, purchase your ticket. Um, the Wisteria Lanes, when we when going back to the RFP, we wanted a social event. Uh, we were very shocked to find out that they had a bowling alley uh, within the hotel. Not only do they have a bowling alley, but they have their own little sitting, almost um, uh, it's like a lounge like a community area. center. It's nice. Yeah, there's a lounge area, there's pool tables, there's video games, there's, I mean, there's just so many, again, so many different sections that can be going on at once. Um, people can be bowling, people can be hanging out in the lounge area, people can be playing the games. Um, and, and, you know, when we were trying to figure out the theme, uh, I remember you and I saying, you know, gosh, wouldn't it just be nice if we could just go in our pajamas? And uh, that's when the, the pajama party came up. And maybe you can talk about the uh, our um, prizes that we're giving out for the pajamas. Oh, yeah. Okay, so when Diana and I said, how nice would it be if we could just go in our pajamas? So after dinner, we'll just run up to our room, change into our pajamas, and come right back downstairs to the pajama party in, in Wisteria Lanes at the venue. Um, we thought, oh, how cool would it be if we had a pajama contest for people wearing um, different kinds of pajamas? So we came up with a list, and let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, pajama party. Okay, so there will be a pajama contest with prizes awarded in the following categories. Most creative pajamas. Most comfy pajamas. Most colorful pajamas. And I'm sure that people can get real creative with all of these different uh, categories. We also are going to have a, an award for pajamas that raise the most awareness about hypersomnia and pajamas that show the most overall hypersomnia support. So we have one, two, three, four, five categories for the pajama party awards. And Diana and I actually went the other day and looked at, um, started picking out what the awards would be. So you will actually receive an award if you participate in the pajama party contest and you win. So <laughs> think long and hard about what you want those pajamas to look like. Now, the one caveat that some of you may not care for is all pajamas must be appropriately modest <laughs> and cover all those bits and parts and pieces. Um, because, you know, this is a, a, an event that's open to all age groups. So we want to make sure that everybody is comfortable and enjoying themselves and having a good time. It was an interesting conversation to have with the hotel staff that we would have um, people traipsing down in their pajamas. Um, 
Yes. And just remember that when you wear your slippers or your flip-flops, you do need socks to go bowling, though. Right. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to stick their bare foot into a rented bowling shoe. That's not fun. <laughs> uh, just to, you will need to wear bowling shoes if you're going to go bowling. To touch on the other social event, um, you can also still purchase aquarium tickets until, uh, I believe, July 3rd. We have to have the... Right. So the deadline, let me, I have my deadlines written down here. The last day to purchase your aquarium ticket is July 3rd. And the reason that that's earlier is because we actually have to turn in numbers to the aquarium that early. We also have to charter a bus um, that will seat the number of people that purchase their aquarium tickets. So we have to have those numbers early, guys. So sorry about that. We won't be able to sell aquarium tickets at the last minute. Um, and then the last day to, or, to purchase your pajama party ticket will be July 15th, which is also the last day to purchase a conference ticket online. Otherwise, you'll have to buy those at the door. And that's as long as there is space available, by the way, because... Both of these outings are limited in number. Um, I think the pajama party we had to limit to 100 people. And what's the limit on the aquarium trip, Di? Uh, 50, I believe. Okay. So um, we do have tickets left for both of those social events. But, um, you know, there aren't unlimited tickets. So definitely make sure that you get your tickets if you want to attend either of those two events. Okay, so let's talk about um, the Saturday conference event. So one question that we keep getting over and over is about live streaming of the conference. Um, and are we going to be live streaming all the conference sessions this year? Um, so, Di, do you want to talk about that a little bit, or do you want me to take that one? I'll start it. Um, in a perfect world, we'd absolutely love to. Um, but as far as the logistics and the staffing, the equipment that would be involved, and quite frankly, the cost, it's extraordinary. Um, so no, we will not be able to do it. Last year we did uh, do a DVD of the sessions, um, and it just, we sold a good amount of them, not as much as we thought we would, and I think the big difference is you lack that con that conference experience. Um, so, and, and our other problem this year is we have so many breakout sessions. Uh, you know, it was different when you videotaped one room and you went all day. Uh, the amount of breakout sessions that are going on would be almost impossible to live stream. Right, because at some points during the day we have up to six sessions going on simultaneously. And um, I actually did look into the cost of bringing in a company to live stream that event. And we're talking about multiple thousands of dollars just to do that. And there, the funds just aren't there to be able to, to do that um, this year. So we're not going to be able to do that. Um, but we definitely would encourage you all to come and attend our event. Um, it's much better in person anyway. <laughs> Um, so I see that we are running out of time, but I do want to touch on a couple more items before, and then we're going to make our huge announcement. I know that I've been teasing you guys on Facebook about this big announcement we're going to be making tonight, and I promise you, momentarily, we will be making that announcement. But let's talk about the silent auction, because this is something we pulled together um, recently, and everybody on the back of their name badge who attends the conference is going to have a number, um, like a, a sticker with a number on it. And that is the number, if you choose to, that you would use to bid on the silent auction items. We've actually had a lot of product donations from different various companies, and we sent out a newsletter about some of those companies recently and some of the products that they've donated for the silent auction. Um, but we also have three special auction items. Di, do you want to talk about those? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um... Last year, we uh, a lot of people were talking. God, if I only had a couple minutes with Dr. Rai, I would I would just love to be able to sit down and talk to him. And uh, he is fun to sit down and talk to. Um, so we just came up with this really neat idea of breakfast with Dr. Rai, um, and we did a raffle ticket on that. And it was really a big hit, and a lot of people were very interested in it. This year, we've gotten some requests that our other doctors, uh, Dr. Trotty and Dr. Jenkins. Um, also be put in the pool. 
So this year we'll do a silent auction, um, and you'll be able to auction on the doctor of your choice, and you will have a. It'll be like a you know a ten o'clock breakfast, more of a brunch the next day because I'm sure that everybody's going to be tired after their pajama party. But you'll have a chance just to sit down with that doctor and have a relaxing meal and ask all the questions you possibly want. Now remember you can't ask personal, they can't diagnose you or you know give you you know specific medical advice right. to your symptoms. Medical advice if you're not their patient so you know. But if, uh, I mean I know a lot of people have comments and questions about anesthesia and hypersomnia. So if those are your concerns, those what you want to hear, you want to hear what's going on, are they testing it, are they doing any clinical trials, sign up for Dr. Jenkins. Yep, Dr. Jenkins is a very a fascinating man, and if he's watching tonight, um, I, I hope that he hears, hears us say that because he's an expert in GABA, so if you're interested in learning more about GABA receptors and flumazenol and how those things interact, um, he can talk to you ad nauseum about all of that, um, and most of that is way over my head, um, but he actually is so kind to bring it down to a level that's totally understandable. And, um, you know, he has a lot of interesting uh, ways of describing it and explaining it to, to where you can understand it. So he is fascinating to listen to. He also tests spinal fluid samples. And so he can, you know, he's going to be doing a session at the conference specifically about that. So if you have more questions about that, you know, he would be the person to um, talk with at breakfast, and you would definitely want to bid on him. Um, Dr. Rye and Dr. Trotty are involved in research with idiopathic hypersomnia, um, and so you know they they would be good ones to uh, bid on and sit down and talk with about uh, all the new things that are going on with idiopathic hypersomnia these days. So, um, Di, how are people going to find out uh, who wins the items and where they pick them up? You know, at the end of the conference, we will um, post the winners outside of the, uh, our last session will be back in that um, university I was talking about, and, you know, we will uh, post the winners, um, and as you're leaving the auditorium, uh, you can pick up your items uh, before you go to dinner. Uh, you can't personally pick up Dr. R, Dr. Chari, or Dr. Jenkins until the next morning, but we will uh, acknowledge that you are the winners, so. though. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we just have one more, let's see, uh, one more question here. Um, I can pull that up if we need to. Um, so Beth asks, for people waiting to purchase tickets, how likely is it that last-minute conference tickets will be available at the door? Good question, Beth. Thank you so much for asking that. Oh, I, let me take that one. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, we always hoped that they would be. Uh, last year, we went into it um, not knowing our numbers and um, sold out very quickly and we had to leave people on the wait list which I gotta tell you broke our heart um, but there was just no way we could get more people in. And it was a long wait list too, it wasn't like you know two or three people, yeah. it was lengthy and it was not fun to tell people that they were wait listed. Yeah it was hard and you know so this year we have a much bigger venue and we have a lot more growth but with that said there is a cap. Uh, we have already sold much more tickets than we did last year. Um, we have a lot more people coming, so don't wait. You know, if you if you think you want to come, make your decision. Uh, we will certainly post if there's um if we're sold out. You know, so you you don't you don't come down there. But hopefully, um, we have room for growth, but the tickets are going fast. Yeah, and and if we happen to have tickets left uh, to sell at the door. They're for a higher price, you know. So I always like to encourage people to buy when the price is low. At its and lowest. I like people to buy the early bird, um, but for people who don't know what their plans are going to be or aren't ready to purchase that early, that's okay. Then we have the you know general uh, admission prices, and then if we have any tickets remaining, we have the at the door price, which is more expensive. Well, so, and, the, and the reason we have to do that is because we have to purchase um, things ahead of time. 
right. uh, the, the attendee packs. We have to get things printed. Uh, you know, we have to tell the venue how many people. So anything that we have to do last minute, um, it, it costs us more. Uh, name badge. If you buy the door, we've got to go figure out your name badge right then and there. So it, it's it is um, it can be done. And if that's what you have to do, then certainly come down and do that. But you know, try to make the plans ahead of time. So Brianna, before I make this huge announcement, yay, um, and before we wrap up the show, I just wanted to bring you in one last time to talk about volunteers because we really need people to help, right? And I know yeah. we're in need of room monitors, aren't we? Or are there any positions that you want to mention that we'd really like people to sign up for? You know, room monitors, I think, is actually almost the easiest one to do, to be honest, because you're not missing any session. So it's like, oh, I'm already going to go to this session. Hey, I can also volunteer during that time period and kind of help contribute. So I always like to not push but encourage people to be room monitors because it really helps. You know, it doesn't at all detract from your experience. Um, even the registration table. that might be full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the session's full, they can be a room monitor and be in the session. <laughs> there you go. Good opportunity there. I mean, registration table even, it's it's wonderful because, you know, it's still not infringing on any part of the sessions that take mm -hmm. place. We close it right before the keynote speaker comes on, so you're not missing any of that talk. Um, you know, so there's lots of opportunities. We're really open for anyone that wants to come and volunteer. We have room on all sides for all the jobs to do that we have available so please feel free put in for it and um, you know even if you're not sure what you want to do um, whether it's the pajama party or the registration table or the aquarium you can put all of them down and just say tentatively so once I find out more about it or just let us know that you're just not sure what they all might entail um, and we're, we'll be more than happy to go over it with you and help you decide what might be best for you. See, that's why we love Brianna being in charge of this because she is the most flexible and kind person <laughs> and she really will work with, with your needs and, and with what, what works with your schedule and works with when you're awake during the day, like your most awake times and um, she really bends over backwards to make sure that this is, is an opportunity to enhance your conference experience and not detract from it. So, and just a personal plea, Diana would re and, and I would really, really like to have helpers who would be willing to carry a box or two out to our car on Sunday morning. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> for that job, the cleanup crew on Sunday, we would really appreciate it, right, Di? <laughs> yes, um, yes. It's uh, it, it's like moving in and moving out. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that comes in, and there's a lot of stuff that goes out. So, a any help is a uh, is appreciated. Let us know ahead of time so we can have a t-shirt for you um, and we know to expect you at the meeting and you're also going to get uh, your contact for then and you can really tell Brianna I'd rather not do this let me help out with this and, and, and she'll, she'll find a place for you. Exactly yes it's meant to be a wonderful experience for you not a negative one and we all understand how you're feeling if you are tired that's not a problem we have all been there before and we'll be the most understanding people seeing how we've been there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I know you guys have been waiting all show for our very, very big announcement. And the number one question that Diana and I get from you guys is, is there a conference session agenda that I can look at so I can start planning my sessions? And the answer to that is yes. Tonight, the Hypersomnia Foundation is introducing an app that we have made for our conference. And I'm going to put the link. I've, I've created a video tutorial that shows you how to download it and shows you how to most efficiently use it and all the neat little features that are hidden in the app. I'm going to post the link to that YouTube video on our um, Google Plus YouTube and Facebook pages right now at the end of the show so that you can be the first people to download the app, see all the sessions that are offered, read all the bios of all the speakers and start planning your conference trip right now today. Isn't that exciting? Oh, Brianna's clapping. She's muted though. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I like is that when Michael first downloaded the app, Michael, what was the first thing that you noticed that you were so excited about? <laughs> Oh, there's a nap room. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> There are lots of hidden gems in the app, and uh, you will get to see all the sessions that are offered, what time they're offered, um, what sessions are offered at what time, so that you can figure out which one you'd like to attend at the 10 o'clock time and which one you'd like to go to at the 11 o'clock time, and you can really, really plan your conference day. So I am going to go ahead and post that link in, on our Google Plus page, our Facebook page, and our YouTube page in the comments underneath this video um, so that you guys can be the first to check out the app. It's called Event Base if you want to go ahead and download it. And it is available on Windows phones and tablets, Android phones and tablets, or iOS phones or tablets. So no matter what kind of device you have, if it's a smart device, you can download the app. <laughs> and Beth is saying, Nap Room? Yes, Beth, there will be a nap room at the conference. Aren't you excited? Oh, thank you, Brianna. She's holding up. Okay, so it's called Event Base. That's the name of the app. So if you want to go ahead and search for that in your app store, you can download it. There it is. And you just search for the Hypersomnia Foundation Conference. Um, once you download Event Base, and you will be able to uh, launch our conference guide for our event. All right, so I guess that's all the time that we have today. Gosh, you know, the time for these snooze TV shows goes so fast every single month. I always feel like, man, I wish we could go longer. Um, but I just want to thank the members of our guest panel for joining us today. Thank you so much, Brianna, and thank you so much, Diana, for all of your hard work um, on the 2015 conference committee. Um, Brianna, thank you for spearheading our volunteer effort this year. We really, really appreciate having you on board. And Michael, I want to thank you so much um, for uh, being our technical producer on Snooze TV every single month. We appreciate you greatly. And I want to thank our audience members for your participation, for submitting your questions ahead of time, and for also posting your questions while we're live on the air. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, remember that you can always find Snooze TV episodes in our archive on our website at www.hypersomniafoundation.org. And our next show is going to be in August. We're skipping July because we have the conference in July. So the um, next show is going to be August 14th um, from, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And please join us for our conference in July. Our conference will be in Atlanta, Georgia on July 17th and 18th, 2015. Um, the 17th will be registration and the aquarium trip, and Saturday, July 18th, will be the big meet conference day. So please make sure that you get your tickets. You can order tickets on our website at hypersomniafoundation.org. And yes, you can still get tickets to our aquarium trip, and you can still purchase a ticket to the pajama party if you have decided that you would also like to attend those events. And, um, and remember, we're not taking it lying down. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.